tail? Yeah. Try kway tail with fresh prawn. Yes. Quite different from Singapore way of doing it. <laughs> Yes, camera, hello. To be precise, uh, right here, 19, 26 July, 1977. So today we are talking uh, between us, uh, having this interview on the 15th of September, 2012. It's supposed to be 35 years, around two months. A little bit of the bean sprout. Yeah, you want to come and help me, honey? Yeah. Although you can't buy it here, but you can cook yourself. It's partly how to cook when you're abroad. Not to be feel defeated, you still try to uh, cook your home Singapore food. I have to escape because uh, I know pretty well if I, I did not, it's only a matter of time I will be put in. And not just put in, they're going to make you confess on the television thing that you you never done before. Not yet. Yeah, what excuse the government uh, put them to arrest me? It's very simple. Um, they accuse me as a Chinese chauvinist, inciting of violence, which is totally unfounded. What I say was very simple, which I still believe even today to be an important entry port for Singapore economic activities. We need to continue to enhance the English language, but we, we shouldn't while we're enhancing the English language, we should not uh, forget to preserve our Malay language, our Tamil language, our Chinese language. For that, they just say you're Chinese or Venice. Now, in those days, you have a thing like that. If any member of your family has crossed the government in any way, you cannot get a suitability cert, which means you cannot get into a university. That immediately deprived anybody who has a vague connection to any political activism of a tertiary education. So this husband of mine mounted a big kind of student protest and so on. Of course, no use, huh? lost, okay. Then came the Vietnam War when the Americans decide to bomb Hanoi on Christmas Day. So, demonstration outside the American embassy, he and some of his friends. And then a student leader, leader called Tan Wa Pia got uh, charged for rioting with two workers. And Francis found himself on the Defence Council. So things got worse and worse, and I realised that very soon, he said he's going to be detained. So, so I told him, I better marry you then. At least I can visit you in prison, you see. And by that time, I know that there are people who have done, you know, dozens of years in prison without trial. So I married him and, true enough, two weeks later, the security forces came to arrest him. And me being such a respectable young Singapore doctor, never thought that when they couldn't get him, that they'll get me a month later. As I came out of prison, I went to exile with him. And that's 35 years of not going home until I brought his ashes back, you see.
六年八年，八十差不多，四十到五十多年了，你看新加坡。在一九六二六六三年二月二号，被抓了一百多人。新加坡我们社会主义阵线啊，也抓了那些领导人啊，林清祥、林福寿、林医生、福寿凯医生、工会的领袖等等啊，很多都被抓了。那么，是外面的工会的领袖，外面的学业学校的领袖，南洋大学的领袖都被抓了。这样我们想来想去，要被他抓吗？还是说走掉？后来想来想去，我们说，还是远走高飞比较自由。<笑>我们当时已经有参加地下民族解放同盟的，那么地下组织的的的,的负责人呢，就安排我们离开一。现在还在这边的跟我这样的人体的身份的人呢，新加坡人，现在还有本来二十五个。去世了三个了，那我们这样的，刘波也是一位啊，啊，刘波啊，包括刘波四个了，去世四个了，来，那么现在还有剩下十二十一个，现在年纪已经六十岁到八十多岁了，所以我们唯一的希望呢，就能够在生之前呢，能够回去新加坡见见我的亲戚朋友。Well, I landed here on the 31st of uh, June, 1976. So that makes it 36 years, 37 years. Have I got my maths right? <laughs> Stop counting. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, life everywhere else is, uh, I suppose, the same. You just have to keep trying. And my real challenge is not really in terms of livelihood, is uh, when and how I can get back to Singapore. And so it's for this reason that uh, I still keep uh, interest in what's going on in Singapore. So far has the Singapore Broadcasting, have they used your material? Uh, yes, yes. I mean, I've only been banned once mm. for a short film. Right. So my other films have luckily not had to deal mm. with censors. Seventy six, seventy seven period was also a period of uh, high repression in Singapore. When I was uh, at the university, that was the time when nobody talks about detention without trial. Nobody knows about the Internal Security Act, although we are supposed to be the creme de la creme. And the moment you start raising that uh, question, I remember the first time I raised the issue of detention without trial was a, a student leader, and To Chin Chai was sharing the same stage, he went ballistic and was uh, uh, making strenuous criticism uh, of what I said on stage. So that was the political atmosphere in Singapore then. The matter that really got uh, me and my colleagues at the Student Union in trouble was when we started to identify a problem in Jurong Industrial Estate, where 
workers being made retrenched, where workers were paid with uh, vouchers issued by the trade union to buy things in the supermarket. That was absolutely illegal. And when we start raising concerns of that, then our time was up. The whole system came down on us heavy. I knew that uh, they had to get rid of me. The first stage of getting rid of me was to get rid of me from the student union. And that was how they had to put me in jail for a year. And to get rid of the student union was to get rid of the base. They had to get rid of my colleagues, so the deportation. And after which, they had to reconstitute the whole student union, so much so that the union was no longer able to do what we did. The best thing for me to continue what I wished to do then was to leave the country. Mangosin season, is it big time? Yeah. So, you know, Juliet just gave me this. She insisted that I should eat this. Yeah, over the last 35 years, there are times when I just said, I want to go home, you know. I want to be back in 100A Upper Strand Control <laughs> and, you know, and maybe work in SGH or something like that. But as the years go by, I think it's becoming less. Of course, when Francis died, it was terrible, you know, because it, it dawned on me that I'm going to die alone in London. And then my sisters will have to take my ashes back. I'm Sui Kim. Uh, I live in KL. I'm a Singaporean, uh, Sui Chai's sister. I'm Sylvia, a uh, Sui Chai's sister-in-law and uh, sister of Francis. I'm Christina. And, uh, Sister of Francis. Yeah. Suicha is my dearest sister. <laughs> now, thank God for Skype. So, every because we are in four of us in four different countries, so every Saturday night we will go on Skype. Four of us. You know, the ISD was right when I was in prison. The ISD said, you know, you think England very good, huh? you know. You go to England, you're nobody, you know. Down here, you're Division One civil servant, you know, and I've, we have looked through your records, you've got everything, you know. You go to England, you're nobody. And Francis, also nobody. You're both refugees. So it did not register. But when life got very tough in London, it all came back, you see. So this is as far away from Singapore as one can be. We had the uh one of the biggest concentration of uh, architects and architecture students. So these young uh, architecture students, without my knowing, work out how much of junks I had, and then put them all into these cubicles, which exactly was uh, the same amount of rubbish. Uh, the beauty is that it was built like a huge zigzag puzzle. Mm -hmm. It's all cut uh, in a workshop using CNC machine and assembled here. So each of these pieces are individual pieces. Little suitcases. Now, for nostalgic reason, when I go back, I will try to, but rather difficult, to put 
all our belongings into these two suitcases, which was what we had when we first came to this country. So this a piece of uh, this a little pieces of nostalgia. <laughs> Well, it's, uh, as I say, everything has a beginning, a middle. Now, these two suitcases represent the beginning of our lives in the UK. Where it will end, I'm not sure at this stage. <laughs> Nice flower. Okay. Uh -uh. How about this photograph? What this photograph tell? Uh, oh, this is uh, something when they first come to this country. I was still wearing salon when I first came to this country. I still wear salon today. All my parents' saving, more or less, all gone. They give me about fifteen thousand Sing dollars. Um, then I spent to almost buying my way out, really, paying this, paying that, on the way to here. So I arrived in London, just about. A couple of hundred pounds left. So it was in a quite a desperate situation. Every day I look for the coin box, look at the newspaper to look for a job. So I did manage to find a job uh, in a hotel. Do everything what the hotel need me to do. So third week after here, I found a job. Yeah, this is when I have a translation company, Katongya, East Asia. Actually, Wapiao is sitting behind this curtain. We share office. And from there, I accumulate a little money and then decide to go back to do my study. City University, that's me. I see the computer really funny, you know. Because I'm in the IT business, <laughs> I find it quite interesting. Sunny, can you put it up for you? Not for throwing. Yeah, not for throwing, huh? Had to put it up, huh? Uh huh. It was uh, 2010. Basically, we have a very simple wedding party. Not elaborate, just a few guests. Ceremony Hotel in Brewway, Johor Bahru, 2010. I mean, I'm 60 years old. Do I look like a 60 year old man? <laughs> I'm 60 though. <laughs> About five years ago, over the internet, one day the junk mail come through. I happened to click on the junk mail. <laughs> and then <laughs> suddenly, my wife invite, invite me to go and see her. Okay, I just casually went to see her and then things just happened. We meet each other immediately. We feel strongly between us. I think she feels the same way. I just casually asked, would you like to come to London? She would, without any hesitation, say yes. Nelson, come over here. Why I was delaying my, my fatherhood initially was a very conscious sort of uh, decision because uh, constantly I know if one day I happen to travel abroad, any accident happened to me, nobody's going to own up about me, they're going to put me back to Singapore. If I have uh, someone which I think is totally unfair to whoever be, to be my, my partner or my wife. 
wish I know what would happen to me. But somehow things change. Children can give you many, many sort of uh, interesting um, things you never thought of. Having two little kids, now I never explained it before, is excellent for Singaporean who haven't got children. Please try that. It's an excellent thing to, to do, excellent thing to do. Okay, here, Daddy, a hat. Next month, October, because my mom is having her 95th birthday uh, in Singapore. My wife, my kid will all be there, and I'll be waiting the other side of the causeway <laughs> for my mom to come over as usual to meet them up as such. See, not forgetting that uh, I still have Lee Kuan Yew's work here. <laughs> have you read it? Uh, no, I only refer to it for my research. But this is a very good book on poor J.B. Jarrett now. Mm. It's, uh, I can't see how uh, Singaporeans can ignore books like this. When I first arrived here, the fortunate thing is that there was already a strong Malaysia-Singapore student movement uh, existing uh, in London and all over the provinces. So there was a call. So in my mind, it was how I could continue that process of, uh, of challenging the lack of democracy in Singapore. And uh, towards that end, I spent lots of time touring campuses, giving talks. And that was how subsequently it became an issue in 1987. Some of my very close friends it was involved with in my student days in Singapore University and those who were involved with me uh, in the UK, where this whole group of 22 young people were detained. Some of them, uh, I've not even known them, but they were all accused of being associates with me in this conspiracy to turn Singapore into a Marxist state. And it's just an exercise to give someone a bad name to justify their detention without trial. When that happened, my ability to rebut those allegations were limited. Limited because the Singapore media just have a complete boycott of what uh, I have to say. And I fully understand that many of my close friends in Singapore uh, would then be very hesitant to uh, communicate with me because careers could be affected if they are known to be associating with me. And I accepted that uh, situation, but just get on to doing what uh, I set myself out to do, and that was to build my uh, career, because then I graduated from uh, Oxford. My original idea of doing law was eventually <laughs> to practice in Singapore. And when they removed my citizenship, that, that was it. Johnson, how are you? All right, man. 
Everything is okay? Yeah. So far, so good. Yeah. ไปนี่ไปนี่ฮะไปนี่ฮะรู้ก็ตอนโซ่ปั้นกลุ่มเลนตะกะลิ我们是起初参加行动党啊，后来跟因为行动党要搞新马赫聘我们反对啊，我们就一批的撤出来去摄政那边了，搞摄政，摄政主义争先。那一九六三年呢，二二他要逮捕我们，就离开新加坡了。很
，所以在海外我们也是要经常关心政治，包括中国，中国中央电视台的，我们也经常看。香港凤凰卫视，我们先看，要懂得世界大事了。我们做过政治的人，不能放弃呵呵这个政治。For years, you see, I was in the UK practicing as a doctor. And when I got my surgical exams and so on, you know, I, I became a surgeon after a long struggle and was operating a British patient, you see. I still got a sense of pride. I said, oh, you know, how I wish I'm operating a Singapore patient, you know. I still see things in terms of Singapore, non-Singapore. Singapore hospital, non-Singapore hospital and so on and so forth. I can't relate to people on the level playing field. Francis has got a healthier psychology than me. He's always happy. He goes in London, he cleans the toilet, then he goes in the evening to the pub and mix up with all sorts. And for him, he's at home, you see. He always builds up a big network of friends, no matter where they are, you know. So when the miners went on strike, he collect tin uh, kind of baked beans and so on, put in a sack and go on a bus to Yorkshire and support the soup kitchen. So that's Francis for you. And sometimes, you see, I get so upset, you know, how can you be so happy, you know, when I'm so miserable, you know, I'm so homesick. After a while, you see, I begin to realise, you see, people are people everywhere. Patients are patients. And it doesn't matter whether they're Singapore patients or British patients, or Palestinian patients, Lebanese patients, they are human beings, and you treat them the same. So these are all things I've got to unlearn. Francis, to be fair to him, is homesick as well, because he has got more to be homesick about. So one day I found him writing this letter to his mother, you see. Of course, the pressure came finally to mum, you see, to ask her son back, and she wrote mum, you know, I want to tell you a story of a young man. A young man who also wrote this letter to his father. He said that, you know, they are richest in the whole world, there are all these things, you know. But what profit a man if he acquires the whole world and lost his own soul? And then he said, Mum, do you know you named me after that young man who is Francis of Assisi? I've lost a lot, you know. I've lost you, I've lost my brother and sister, my career and so on, and here am I, a refugee. But mum, I got my soul. And I think his mum understood, because then his mum phoned and said, look, you do not come back and make confessions and implicate your friends and put other people in jail. I'd be very ashamed of you. And if you come back, I will take a gun and I'll shoot you and then I'll go and shoot the chief of the ISD. This is Peranakan language, very passionate, you see. So I think his mother was converted to understand what's standing up for justice. It was only when I read his letter to his mother that I realised how much it affected him, you see. And, but he never let on. He will sing, he will write songs. When he's fleeing the exile, he writes songs about exile. He wrote about 15th of February, which was a day when he got to flee Singapore. It was the 15th of February, the day of the night. They kept knocking and banging my door. I slipped quietly away, but the other could not. And I know that I'd see them no more. They had taken so many, how many I know not. Well, there's Mahar and Mike and Sami. And there's Jinkui and others, the brave and the tall. And the ones more behind Changi Wall. 
Oh, my dear bride, my dear is just two weeks we're wed. Please remember the vow that we made. I have left my homeland for a place far away. But I know I'll be back home someday. Oh, my people, my people, the ones that I love, I will never see you again. Till the storm clouds gather at break of the dawn, and Bungaraya shall bloom in rain. Welcome to Singapore, ladies and gentlemen. And to all Singaporeans and residents of Singapore, a warm welcome home. When my first son was born, the first thing I can think of, he had to be a Singaporean. He had to be a Singapore citizen. So immediately, within two weeks, I wrote to the Singapore High Commission, said, can you please send me the form? I want to enroll my son to be a Singapore citizen. There are two conditions I could not fulfill. First, you might have a Singapore passport. Second, you might have a valid exit permit. That means for all the army boys who left Singapore, you have to have a proper exit permit. I have none. So we end up no choice. We apply for the British passport for my son. So that's it. So uh, I feel a little disappointed because I do want my son not only to be a Singapore citizen, I want him to join Singapore Armed Forces. I'm a strong supporter of Singapore Armed Forces. I always do. I believe we must have a strong defense forces for Singapore. I strongly believe that. Nobody in the world can defend Singapore except Singapore itself. We want to survive as a peaceful, prosperous country we must be able to defend ourselves. I strongly believe that. I always belong that, believe that. I always support a strong Singapore Armed Forces. So I want my son eventually join Singapore Armed Forces. That was the main motive I want him to be a Singapore citizenship, or to be a Singapore citizen. That was my real disappointment. Okay. My son cannot be a Singapore citizen and eventually join Singapore SAF. So even today, I feel a little <laughs> bitter when I, whenever I think about this. I don't know why Singapore have to isolate people like myself who have a, some, such a strong sense of belonging.
转机，随想。二零零五，二零零六年五月十七日，我转机了。原是新加坡土生土长公民，没料到离乡背井近半个世纪，而且做了十二年泰国的无国籍国家建设者。如今，我成了持有智慧卡身份证的泰国公民。无奈啊，却也庆幸。无奈，不是我不爱新加坡。庆幸，泰国的天地宽容。海峡殖民地，种牛痘的印记，迄今。还留在左臂上。牛车水、机灵街、大门楼、丹阳八嘎、八十八酿、红灯码头，童年少年，借半游荡，怎么会忘记？海山街口，日军投下第一枚炸弹，灯婆街道两旁。待收敛的句句诗，史诗在发臭。百思华，举百旗投降。随之狗去猴子来，米字旗又重新飘扬。就嘎浪机场，万中齐喊 m e r d e g a 风雨中，自治邦，迈向独立。这一切的一切，对我来说，见证历史的故事讲不完。新加坡啊，新加坡，你可知道，我对你的今天和明天，仍然挂赌牵肠。二零零六年五月二十五日，写于泰南和爱，陈新荣。The Palestinians also took me out of my very parochial kind of world outlook. So to them, I'm grateful, very grateful. I was at that time a trainee surgeon in Saint Thomas's. In 1982, one day when I went home, I switched on the television. And I saw a city being bombed in a most cruel manner, and I was shocked. I didn't believe that Israel did this to other people. Just a few weeks later, an appeal came from Christian Aid asking for a surgeon to go and treat the wounded, and then begin a journey of 28 years. When I met the Palestinians, I realized that the whole nation. Of Palestine is in exile. None of them can go home. And the question of you know, where are you going to have your children be brought up? Where are you going to be buried? Where are ashes going to be when you die? How are you going to meet your family? Will they see you, or will your mother die without seeing you, and so on? All these are questions which the exiles go through. To be a Palestinian, you not only have to build, you have to rebuild. You not only have to die, you got to die a refugee. You not only got to stay hopeful, you got to believe in your hope and have faith, and never let it go. You know that probably in your lifetime, the four and a half million refugees or the people in diaspora will not go home, but you have to have faith that your children will. If not, their children will. And it's not only a question of dying. Why did they die refugees? I am also a refugee, so that really focused me into realizing that we are not an island. 
we live in relation to each other and we need each other and we share our strengths and weaknesses through each other. So that was uh, the injustice situation. But as a doctor, there's only one thing I can do. So that's why we set up Medical Aid for Palestinians, so that there is a charity who will support the Palestinians, whether they're living under occupation, in exile, in the refugee camps, in the diaspora. So that was how Medical Aid for Palestinians was founded. What is the significance of the bow tie in front? Huh? <laughs> they look at it and say, this one is like a champagne socialist. <laughs> because you are supposed to be a Marxist, right? Yeah, yeah. So you yeah. play your role to it. I am very honoured and very pleased to be able to launch these two books. And I think Wapiao, uh, if, if, if Yu Sing is right, should have brought a bottle, bottle of champagne and we could have crashed a <laughs> bottle of champagne uh, to launch the books. <laughs> Those who voted in the PAP over the years, in the last 50 years, they could see their housing has improved from slums to high rise. They have seen themselves progress from being unemployed to being employed. Their own position from being illiterate or with little education, they are able to bring their children to university level, enjoy tertiary level uh, education. Now that we have achieved this very high level of economic development, who would still feel the need for high level of political control? I started life as a very much uh, a young man, a young student at the age of uh, 24. And of course, if uh, the issue of democracy in Singapore is no longer an issue, then I can say that there is a closure. But in so far as what I started off to achieve, to raise the issue of democracy in Singapore, that is still unfinished business. And I just don't like to close a file when uh, we don't have it uh, satisfactorily resolved is very much uh, within my DNA. Oh,很好,很好 好的<笑> 哦,這個自己做的。是在部隊自己做的。你看部隊裡面真的有很多人才的。沒有,我們那時候的吊床啊,在森林裡面睡覺的時候就是綁架的吊床。<笑>
，并且大家都藏起来了，出来以后也不敢给人家看了。嗯、我们活动这边呢、啊，都是山丘啊，又是又是原始森林呐、啊，它飞机又架不不容易架到我们。坦克车跟装甲车不能够进，那山丘二十四十五度以上那就很难上了，对，所以我们站的有利的地形。我们这些的想法就是进进入这个森林，我们就是坚持在，就就算老死了，我们就说死了，我们就埋葬在那种阿大树的下的下面，这样，当时完全没有想到会在。会会再出来的，所以我们也没有想到重新会见到我们的孩子。四五年以后才见到，我们都好像是没很惊奇的感觉，以为这一切都从此，我们一进入森林就割割绝了的。我们在学校学的。马公和暴力有很亲密的关系啊。马公啊，被迫采取暴力来进行争取民主独立，这个是很不得已的。从马来亚共产党一九三零年组织成以后啊，英国政府就凡是马公的成员就逮捕迫害。杀害，在马来亚、像新加坡要投降给日本人的前夕，才把被抓去在监牢里面的马共的成员释放。释放人呢，把新加坡的最重的抗日的那个担子呢，交给马共的人负责。这样子呢，你看他跟英国人打了七八年的仗，牺牲几千人呢、啊。一直到一九五五年，我们主张华联和谈，英国政府通过阿杜拉曼提出的条件就是说，如果马共要公开，要投降先。所以陈平只好回答说，如果要我们投降，只好打到最后一个人咯。你这个党是要要出来的时候拍的、哦。八七年，八七年，我们这个准备说，如果打仗牺牲，还可以做纪念I came to Malaysia because of Dr. Lim Hock Siu. This is memorial, representing Francis. Of course, if Francis was alive, he would do that. And I also want to meet up with the old guys and really touch base with them. Because I really don't know when will we see each other again, you see. Yeah. And it's important, you see, to really touch base and thank them for what they have done. Back in Singapore, or you... 朋友们、同志们，今天我们集合在这，是要来悼念我们尊敬的林福寿医生。他是一个政治扣留者，他被扣留长达十九年余。他是反制和争取独立的斗士，所以今天呢，我们在这里悼念他。We were detained together in Operation Cold Storage in February 2nd, 1963. And we were released a few days apart in 1983. This is Rose. Fine. I'm 
on the way with sweet chai. Sudah makan? Yes, but have you makan or not? If you haven't makan, we beli barang kasi awak. I found a whole lot of Malaysian one dollar uh -huh. in Francis's wallet. Oh, <laughs> I'm feeling a lot better now, not so yeah. upset. So I can I'm going through Francis's things a bit uh -huh. at a time. Lay all your money, all no. Your money, I'm not paying some money. Then my, if you want another one dollar, I also have. Okay. My daughter is still in the states, and two boys are in Singapore. Right. The one is married, one is not married. So Rose was pregnant with a younger child, okay? Mm. And uh, they came to arrest Jin Kui. So the decision is whether it is fair, you know, to go in the long prison term and leave your wife pregnant with your child, you see. Because, you see, in those days, it's no joke, you see. The government can lock you up for dozens of years, you see. Mm. So the in-law say, uh, don't worry, we'll bring the kid up if you need us to, you see. Yeah. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. yeah. And then he turned up to be the most wonderful young man because I met him, you see, in London. Wonderful, caring and sensitive person. Yeah. I hope he had a wonderful wife. Has wow. he got a wonderful wife? Well, I think so. <laughs> Has a mother-in-law? Okay. <laughs> I'm sure. I think you, you might not know, you know, what you mean to Francis. You have been his mentor and his inspiration for many things. And that's why he wrote this song and his name was Said for you. You remember, he came here many years ago, he sang it for you. Yes, yes, I think he did, yes. Yeah, he yes. did, yeah. I think it was way back in the 2nd of February, 1960. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Yeah, Operation Postal. Yeah, correct, right? correct. Yeah. yeah. That, that was the first time I met uh, Said. But uh, Said and I have got a very special relationship uh -huh. because he was my future wife's neighbor. Yes, correct. <laughs> In Jalan yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Right? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> So, you know, in, in Changi, when we talk of Jalan Gasing or KL, yeah. you know, uh, there was that special thing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, very special thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. How many of you, roughly? Oh, at the peak, at the peak uh, more than 100. Yes, correct, correct. Yeah. Wow, that is something, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I think during the time we were there, that was, that was the beginning of that uh, detention. Uh, yes, and, yes. And, and conditions were were better than, yeah, than yeah. later, yeah. Yeah. yeah? Conditions were much better than later. Because later, you know, all kinds of pressure would be put upon them. Yeah. By then, I had already left. Yeah. And uh, soon after I left Singapore, I, I, went to, I went to Canada to do my graduate studies. On my return four years later, they were still in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, Can and... Uh, my heart pain. <laughs> uh, and we learned a lot of what, what it means by, by uh, detention without trial. Because we were there for years, you see. Kofang was with me for a few years. Now. The first four, five years? Four and a half years. Old. Four and a half years. I, well, I don't know why they continue to detain me for another 10, 12 years. <laughs> Altogether about 17 years now. Very upset. It's, it's a very black chapter yeah. in Singapore history. Yeah. And even right now, I, I cannot begin to quantify the cost <coughs> to the younger people. What is done to your generation is unacceptable, totally right. unacceptable. But to continue that kind of behaviour towards a younger generation 
is a crime. Yes. You see, the meaning of the struggle is to make uh, the people, the other, especially the younger generation, aware that our society today is not a free society. And our society today is being suppressed by the people in power. And these people who are in power today has been the people or continuation of the popular people in power, even in our days, during our struggle days. So in that sense, in my opinion, the struggle continues. Tejit,发给我。No, If none of this happened, I really do not know. I might get to be very prominent, make a lot of money, and maybe have some children, save my mother a lot of heartaches, and, and that would be unthinkable. Not to say that it's a bad thing, I think it's a good thing. But the alternative is what I've been through. Making a stand is expensive. Supporting those who make a stand can be just as expensive. Personally, I think. But, but you know, until you are there, you really don't know. And maybe that's also an attitude that my generation did not fight hard enough to bring democracy and freedom to Singapore. But I can tell you some of us did, and we, we tried quite hard. Whether we failed or we did not, it's not the point, but we did try. I am a child of my island, the fairest island by far. Selatan Tanah Melayu, anak pulau Singapura. 
Inilah riwayat kita We have a story to tell you Of how we worked hard to make this Part of our tanah ayeku Our fathers came from the mainland And other lands far away They made the old street a massacre The thriving city of today Dari dulu sampai sekarang Siapa membina sekolah Dan mendirikan bangunan Ialah semua rakyat kita So as a child of my island I know the ink is not dry Our story still yet unwritten Today I'll join my people's cry